I'm like fully expecting to see like a ODST like release for the next Halo experience. Do you think 343 will have a separate multiplayer and single player experience for the next game? Like they won't be bundled together as a single product. I think that that's what's going to happen. I've been trying to write up a uh, script explaining why I think the next Halo game is going is not going to be a full Halo game. It's going to be like an ODST like kind of experience, but not like ODST. Uh, it feels hard to keep uh, these two things together without a disaster. Well, I think it's mainly because 343 has always just tried to reinvent the wheel when it comes to making their games and just like starting from scratch every single time rather than go having a good foundation and building on top of it. If I only had that gameplay foundation with Infinite, but then the engine was just not, just didn't work. It was not good for developing Halo. It's a miracle those old Halo games, 3 and Reach came out fleshed out. Well, it's because, well yeah, it definitely is, especially Halo 2. Like, lucky that that game even functioned half way decent. Still a ton of bugs that made it into the game that people thought were like feature like button combos. Like, no, those are bugs. It's like patching wasn't really a thing back in 2004. Back in that back then you released the game and that was it. Bunch of like they had like a solid foundation with their gameplay with with Halo and they just kind of kept building on top of it. They didn't really mess a whole lot with it. Like, yeah, they made their tweaks here and there compared to Halo 2. Halo 2 is a battle rifle being like hit scan compared to Halo 3's being projectile. They just slowed the bullet time of it world travel of it like it's like little minor differences like that which make huge gameplay changes but they don't require a whole lot like a, re a reworking of the gameplay you know what i mean and that's something that 343 has struggled with because it seems like every time they make a new game it's like starting from the ground up recreating everything since halo 4 and since what they've gone with that attempt of just reworking the game every single time they haven't had a good chance to build a good foundation to be additive to halo like bungie was right ce released weapon weapons were horribly balanced the campaign was amazing good story and then the next game, and they had like a good custom game element to it. You come over with the Halo 2, and then they add online components to it, add some new weapons, but the gameplay generally stayed the same for the most part, with just some updates, some new weapons, and maps in the campaign. And the fact that Halo 2 came out the way it did, or how disastrous the development of that game was, was kind of insane. And then you had Halo 3, which then they just kind of built on top of Halo 2 by adding more features like Forge, uh, file shares, more in-depth armor customization. Like they just kept adding to it. They weren't trying to reinvent the wheel every single time. And Reach was like the culmination of everything. Reach is probably the most fully realized Halo game that Bungie ever made. Fully realized game that they've ever made, honestly. Like the campaign was felt complete. You had insane amount of customization for the armor. They just added, they just added more customization, right? added more to forge added more to multiplayer and to where like this feature creep kind of built up halo to end up being like this massive game like a catch-all kind of experience which back in 2010 that's what those triple a games were really trying to shoot for were like that catch-all experience and nowadays it seems like a lot of games are trying to be more concise and refined with their experiences like i wrote this down you know think of like the the top games out there right yeah counter-strike 2 what is it Attack, defense, bombs. Yeah, Dota 2, it's a MOBA. That's what it tries to be. It's a MOBA. It doesn't try to be anything else. You don't get like any creation tools or anything like that, from my knowledge. It's just, it's a MOBA. PUBG, it's Battle Royale. Fortnite was just Battle Royale, but now since they've had so much money, so many players and so many more resources, they, they can, they've they been able to add in things like the for, their version of a Forge mode, uh, they're now like their Unreal 5 Fortnite engine thing that you can create anything with and then people kind of just go crazy with that. But that's because of how insanely successful the Battle Royale experience has been. And still is to this point. Apex Legends, Battle Royale, right? It's just Battle Royale. Yeah, yeah they have other modes. They recently been added, but they're more niche modes, one-offs one kind of thing. That's not the core experience. It's Battle Royale. Rainbow Six Siege. It's attack defense bomb mode, right? Same thing as like Counter-Strike, but just different. The only games you ever see out there that are like catch-all games, what I say like Grand Theft Auto V would be one. Call of Duty is another, but both of these games have insane amount of budget, insane amount of work people working on these games. Didn't I hear like, like GTA, rumors that GTA 6 is costing like a $2 billion to make or something? Estimated $2 billion to make GTA 6. That's insane. But the thing is like, you can put that investment into Grand Theft Auto because you know the game is going to sell. Grand Theft Auto has been a top selling game since three. Since 2001, Grand Theft Auto has just been printing money. Rockstar just knows they just need to basically just update GTA 5 with new graphics and some new features and new story. GTA 6, you know, 
you're not going wild with it. You're not reinventing the wheel. You're going to get basically the GTA 5 experience, but in a modern era, you know, because it's been the game's been out since 2013. The Grand Theft Auto series and Call of Duty series have a track record of consistent money making success over and over and over. What franchise hasn't had that? Halo. It's been rocky since the after the release of Halo 4. Halo 4 sold really well, but it didn't really hold a good population. I'm sure they've hit their target market, their targets when it comes to sales, maybe, but it just seems like it hasn't been able to hold a player base to continue making sales. Like, so why would Microsoft invest hundreds of millions of dollars into a game where the outcome of it is uncertain? I'm, I'm putting myself in the shoes of what a publisher would do, right? Having hundreds of millions of dollars, do you invest that money into Halo? Do you invest that kind of money into a new IP? Wait, wh what do you do with this money, you know? And Halo and 343 have had a track record of lackluster releases, lackluster, I'm, I'm assuming sales. Why wouldn't you just make a smaller project that might test something new, do something a little different, you know what I mean? Because I, honestly, I feel like with Halo, that it's a, it's a cursed franchise when it comes to the gaming community at large, because people mainly view Halo as nostalgia. Like, what does everyone keep wanting when it comes to the Halo franchise, when they, even with the Halo community, is what we had 10 years ago, right? We want to capture those same feelings. And it's been difficult to do that with modern game development. You know, keep hearing from game devs that it's more complicated to develop games nowadays, which I would totally understand that. I get it. I hear you on that. Uh, we haven't never, we just never really had any kind of in-depth reason why. But, you know, I take them at their word. They're the guys in the trenches. I, you know, if they say it's more difficult to make games now than it was then, I'd believe them. Microsoft should just hire companies to work on Halo like COD. They are doing that right now. That's what like the new, that's what the map elevation was all about. That's what the map corrosion, that's made by Sparasoft as well. And there's more maps coming from them as well. And 343 also knows when it comes to developing Halo that time is of the essence, right? They can't wait another four, five years to make a full release Halo game. That's just not on the table right now. We need something new as soon as possible. 10 years and having one new game, what? Call of Duty gets a new game every year, dude. Like, ugh. It's a content creator, I wish. I love Halo so much more than Call of Duty. That's why I make Halo content, because I genuinely love the franchise. I've grown up with the franchise. It's been part of my life since 2001. You know, some of my best gaming memories of all time that will just never be topped was, you know, system linking with my friends back in high school, playing Blood Gold CTF until we just like fell asleep and then we'd wake up and do it again. But again, it's like me kind of wishing that Halo could capture those same feelings I had when I first played the game back in the 2000s, which it seems to be the general trend with Halo. And Halo has not have a proven track record of printing money. And 343 got plenty of time, plenty of investment from Microsoft to make Infinite. Didn't really work out with a, with a big, huge budget game. Having time being of the essence as well, meaning you would think that you would see like a smaller project come out of it. It's something I've been writing about. Like I wrote this entire article right here. Or not article, but script. Explaining why I expect the next Halo game to be a much more refined experience. Like <laughs> all these pages. Oh, wait, 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 how many pages am I on? Page, I'm working on page seven right now. And also right now, I forgot to mention, the gaming industry as a whole is suffering big time right now. We see tons of layoffs happening all across tech and just all across the tech industry all across gaming, like Epic laid off 16% of their workforce. And that's Epic Games, like the people who make Fortnite. And if Fortnite has to cut people because of financial constraints, constraints or whatever, you know that means that everyone else is hurting. <laughs> I mean, we do know that 343 are hiring people, right? They're kind of building the team back out for whatever the next Halo experience is going to be. They're kind of still in that pre-production stage. We know that the next Halo experience was as shared by LinkedIn profiles that it's currently been in the works since 2022. Still early production, like 20, starting 2022 could be scrappy little demos to kind of show like ideas kind of thing. Like that's technically that's development, you know? We just think that with the state of the game industry, the state of Halo and how things have just been tough on the franchise and how I think Halo needs to do something new with the franchise as well to get people excited about playing the game. I'm like fully expecting to see like a ODST like release for the next Halo experience. As in like, it's almost like more of like a side thing, an expansion really, but not like a full fledged Halo game, but enough content on it to justify 
a $70 purchase. Now I think it's gonna piss off a lot of people because people will be like, where's my thing that I like to do within Halo? Or where's my niche? And they'll be like, well, it's just not that type of game. And I think if 343 communicates that properly saying that like, this game isn't your typical Halo experience where it's like a catch all experience that we've had throughout the previous decades. And it's much more refined, does a thing rather than everything type of experience. I think that's what we could see next from the next Halo game. So Speedwag, short answer, yes. <laughs>